1. Early Life of Ramkrishna Paramhans Ramkrishna was very attractive since childhood due to which everyone, familiar or unfamiliar, loved him. In the village sages and monks were often used to come and stay. Ramkrishna used to sit with them four hours and listen to religious stories and talks. When he turned five years of age, he was sent to school. But at that stage, he became so engrossed in prayers and meditation that he could not read or write. He used to say that after learning to read and write, I will have to take up the profession of priest, collect pulses, rice and bring income. I don't need such knowledge. Such food is produced in my farm only. At the age of around 15 years, often he used to pray, I want to see you, my goddess Kali. His condition would become like that of madness, and forgetting the knowledge of his body, he would shout, Oh my goddess mother. Four hours due to which people started considering him really mad. In this way, through internal devotion, faith and renunciation, he continued to progress in the spiritual path. Whenever he sat down to meditate, he would soon fall into a state of trance, and he would sit like a stone statue for a long time. Anyone who saw him would not remain without being impressed by him. The news of his deep meditation spread far and wide, and hundreds of people started coming to see him. They used to offer many types of offerings, but they did not even touch it. He had developed such an aversion to money through spiritual practice that touching gold and silver made him feel irritation. Big and important people used to praise him and pray for him, but he did not pay attention to that side either. People believed that he had directly seen Goddess Kali, and he did every work only after asking her. 2. Lust and Gold or Money There are only two things in the world that bind a man. Lust and money, all other things come under these two. In addition to the fulfillment of sexual desires, a woman gives birth to children. Their marriage leads to the growth of the family. Same is the case with money also, to earn money. One has to study, serve others, and flatter others. One always has to be suspicious and worried about money. The mind runs here and there to attain wealth, therefore. A person who aspires to progress in the spiritual field will have to completely give up for lust and money. The moment Ramkrishna Paramhans attained divine knowledge, he decided that God is the essence of all things and efforts should be made to attain him. After this he started practicing to strengthen this feeling. He took a coin in one hand and a lump of clay in the other and addressed his mind and said, O oh mind, you call this coin, and this one clay. A coin is a round piece of some metal, it is an inanimate substance. With money, things like rice, clothes, house, elephant, hoss can be obtained, food can be provided to some people, pilgrimage can be done, gods and saints can be served. But the Supreme cannot be attained through this. Because while it exists, the ego cannot be completely destroyed, nor can the mind become free from attachment. Even if one can perform religious activities, like service to gods and saints, but it only brings attachments. Looking at the soil, he would say, this is also an inanimate substance, but it produces food which protects the human body. Houses are built using soil and idols of gods and goddesses can also be made. The work which is done by money can also be done by soil. Both are of the same category of inert substances, and both have the same results, hey mind. Will you be satisfied with these two things, or will you try to attain the absolute? Saying this, he closed his eyes, and started making sounds like money soil, money soil. At last, he threw both of them in the river. By practicing this way again and again, he made his mind so detached towards money, that touching any metal felt like a great pain. Similarly, he thought about a woman, that no matter how her lust is kept, it only weakens the brain and mind and hinders the contemplation of God. It is accepted that people accept it for a happiness, but that happiness is only momentary, can never be permanent, rather its end result is always harmful. 3. Test of Ramkrishna Paramhansa At the time, when Ramkrishna Paramhansa 
was 25 years old. His body was very strong and the people were immediately attracted by his beauty. Thus, at that time he was a complete youth. But people used to treat him like a five-year-old child. Women did not hesitate at all in coming to him. Yet the human mind is so weak and distrustful that in the end these people put him into a test. Matura Babu, who was the founder of a temple, took Paramans to her house after first consulting a prostitute named Lakshmibari, who lived in the fisherman's market of Calcutta. Lakshmibari had gathered fifteen beautiful young prostitutes in a semi-nude state in a room. After taking Paramhans to that room, Matura Babu slowly went to another room. Paramhans lived completely naked these days, covering his body only with a sheet from above. The beauty and expressions of such girls create confusion in the minds of even sages. Then today, she was using all kinds of tricks to test Paramhans. As soon as Ramakrishna reached the room, he stood among them and bowed his head saying Mother Anandmayi, Mother Goddess, and while reciting these words again and again, he reached a state of samadhi, which means the deepest state in meditation. Tears of love were continuously flowing from his eyes. The prostitutes became frightened after seeing him in such a condition. Someone started fanning them, realizing that she had committed some crime. She started apologizing. Seeing this scene, Matura Babu became extremely embarrassed and from that day onwards his devotion towards Paramhans became even stronger. Swami Vivekananda said to those disciples of Paramahans, who often talked about doing work like Guru Ramkrishna that, working like Paramahans or following his path is not a joke. He kept staying with the young woman for months, yet no kind of disorder or lust arose in his mind. This is beyond the control of man. The result of this tremendous spiritual power was that even the newly educated people of that time started worshipping this illiterate saint by calling him God for detachment after some time. The fame of Ramkrishna Paramhansa's sacrifice and penance spread far and wide and many people started coming to see him. Even though he did not like crowds, he could neither refuse anyone nor utter harsh words at that time. A person named Lakshmi Narayan, seeing the torn bedsheet on Paramhansa's bed, said, Your bedsheet is torn, why don't you change it? He replied, It is still fit for use, when it bursts more. The temple owner will send another one. Lakshmi Narayan started saying, This rule is not right. New clothes should be given before the clothes get torn and become tattered. The rich people of this city are ignorant in this regard. They do not know how to respect the sages. In my city, the rich people make so many arrangements for the sages. It is said that they do not need to ask anything from anyone for their expenses. If a saint has to worry about his livelihood, then his devotional service gets hampered. Therefore, I wish to deposit some money in your name, so that its interest will keep all your expenses under control. On hearing this, Paramhans became very dissatisfied and started calling out, Why do you push me into the well of evil by showing greed for money? Money is a thorn in the path of charity, and it brings a person down from a good position. You tell me whether the absolute can be attained through money. No, no, never. Money is an inanimate substance. Whatever is obtained from it will also be inanimate. Money is also required for the protection of the body. But my work goes on cleanly with the grace of Goddess. Therefore, I do not see any reason for a hoarding money. Do you think that I live in the temple of Rosmani and she gives me food? The ignorant think so? But is it true who has given the money to Rosmani? At the time of her birth, she had not brought any money with her, and at the time of her death, she would not be able to take anything with her. Therefore this is only an external phenomenon. I salute this phenomenon, but inanimate matter can become a cooperative of inanimate matter only. Hearing this, Lakshmi Narayan said, I cannot fully approve of what you say. The views you expressed regarding yourself are not right. I have understood who you are, and that is why I made this proposal. I know very well that your mind has become completely separated from the objects. 
Just like oral floats on water, your mind will continue to float on objects. You talked about ego, but there is no possibility of it finding a place in the mind of a pious person like you. No. Ramkrishna Paramans replied, Oral and water cannot mix together, but the smell of oral definitely comes in the water, and as more days pass, grime gets accumulated at the place where oral and water meet, and a foul smell starts emanating from it. Similarly, before the mind gets mixed with the objects, a foul smell will start emanating from the objects, and then the mind will get distorted. Lakshmi Narayan said, Okay, if you find such hindrance in this work, then I will deposit money in the name of one of your relatives. But Paramhans refused for this also and said, Even doing this will cast a shadow on my mind. I will know that this money is mine. It has just been transferred to someone else's name. This is even more of a sin. Lakshmi Narayan again said with great insistence, You will definitely have to take this money. When I have decided to donate this money to you, then I cannot take it back at all. Use it as per your wish. On hearing these words of Lakshmi Narayan, Ramkrishna Paramhan started crying like a child, Mother, why do you bring such people to me? Mother, those who want to separate me from you, they are hostile towards me, Mother. Saying this, he attains in the intense state of the Absolute. Lakshmi Narayan was very surprised to see this, and he started apologizing. 5. Unity and difference of different sects. Although Ramkrishna Paramhans was a devotee of Goddess Kali and always meditated on her, but once an idea arose in his mind to examine the worship methods of other sects, but he was not one of those people who would take decisions regarding the principles of other sects after reading or listening to them. He decided to worship it in a practical way, so that he could fully experience its results. First he thought of worshipping Lord Rama. He found a Rimanandi Sadhu and took initiation from him. He thought that Hanumanji was the biggest devotee of Lord Rama, because he used to see Ram in everything of the world, and those in which Ram was not seen were not accepted. That's why Paramhans also worship Ram according to the spirit of Hanuman. After this he worshipped Sri Krishna and became absorbed in him for some time. He often used to say, Dear Kanhaya, I will not let you go now, understood. Without seeing you, my life becomes restless. The ten directions seem void, take this, my dear, eat this fruit. He used to say many such things out of emotion. In this way, Paramhans, after studying the different branches of the path of devotion, came to the conclusion that the ultimate result of all the sex is the same. Everyone is trying only to attain God, not only this. Even when he tried practicing several different tantric methods, he did not find any significant difference. In this way, after gaining direct experience of the inner state of various religions, he understood that generally religion is divided into two parts. The first is the department of knowledge or self-essence, and the second is the department of devotion. He also took initiation into Sikhism and understood its essence. Finally one day, a thought came to his mind that what is the difference between Hindu and Muslim? This should also be known. In this regard, he prayed to Goddess Kali and Goddess soon fulfilled it. In a village named Domdharma, there lived a sailor named Govind Das who secretly used to perform meditation and hymns according to Muslim religion. At this time, he came to Paramahams and initiated him into the Muslim religion. He did the sadhana accordingly for three days. Then his feeling changed. During these three days, he did not enter Kali's temple, did not eat Kali's prasad and the Hindu feeling also disappeared from his conscience. As a result of this test, they came to the conclusion that the type of system of Hindus is similar to that of Muslims. Prophet Muhammad has said, that only the one who kills the infidels or kafir will be able to live happily in heaven with the angels. Kafir means the disorders of the senses, like lust, anger, greed, attachment, intoxication, jealousy. Only by their destruction or suppression comes the light of knowledge and power, 
and without the companionship of knowledge, there is no other path to happiness and freedom for man. Thereafter he also got introduced to the worship of Christianity. By examining them in this way, he found direct proof of the truth of that scripture, that different sects and means ultimately lead to the same ultimate goal. It is a mistake to discriminate between them or consider them big or small. He never had any feeling of disobedience towards any religion or the saints who followed it. 6. Attainment of the Absolute In the last stage of his extreme meditation, a Digambara Brahman's name Totapuri came to the city of Ramkrishna. There he saw Ramkrishna and found in him the traits of a complete yogi. Asked him, Will you do some sodhana? Ramakrishna replied, If my goddess mother asks, I will do it, Totapuri said. Then go and ask your mother, like an innocent child. He quickly went inside the temple of Goddess Kali. Goddess Kali replied, Yes, go and learn. Then he asked, Who will teach, mother? Goddess Kali replied, Learn from the one who has come to teach you. Paramahans came to Totapuri after questioning and answering himself in this way and said, Yes, my mother has said, He will learn Vedanta from you. Totapuri tried to make the disciple Ramkrishna attain Samadhi. In the beginning, there was some difficulty in attaining that deep state of the Absolute, because he always used to meditate on Goddess. But when Totapuri pierced him forcefully between his eyebrows with a piece of glass and ordered him to meditate on that point, he immediately attained the Absolute and sat in the same state of zero knowledge of the body for three days. Seeing this, Totapuri was very surprised and started saying on his own, This state which I could achieve by doing rigorous methods for forty years was achieved by this great man in a single day. Ah, oh, what a divine illusion this is! Then Totapuri tried hard to wake him from trance. Totapuri had a big water pot and a tong. He always kept the pot and tong sparkling clean by cleaning them. Even after he had attained the extreme state, he used to practice meditation regularly. One day Paramhans asked Totapuri, You have attained the Absolute. Why do you practice meditation now? Hearing this, Totapuri pointed towards the pot and said, Look, how shining this pot is. If it is not always cleaned properly, dirt will accumulate on it. The state of the mind is also similar. If through meditation, the mind is constantly if not cleaned, it will become dirty. Considering the words of the Guru as true, Paramahans asked, But, what if this pot was made of gold? Then even if it is not cleaned every day, it would not have been covered with dirt. Totapuri laughed and told this to be true, and it came to his mind that Paramahans was actually as clean as a golden pot, and no dirt could settle on him. 7. Debate with well-respected people One day, Paramahans was called in the well-respected group of some people and many kings and ministers. At that time, Krishna Das was the main speaker among all the members. He said to Paramahans, The preaching of renunciation has destroyed this country. It was the religion of ancient times to declare everything in the world as meaningless. It was because of this kind of belief that India became dependent. That is why you have to preach like this. We need something that will actually benefit the country. Paramhans laughed and replied, There are not many people with such opposite intelligence in our country. What welfare will you do for the living beings? I know very well what you call welfare, providing food to five people, treating patients or building one or two roads, ponds or wells. Such works bring some benefit. It is fine. But how much is the power of man? How can you remove people's food problems? The reason for food scarcity is that God did not rain enough water and did not even produce food. You try to end the famine by collecting rice from here and there. But how many people are saved by that? The famines of many states. How many lakhs of men and women have died due to malnutrition? How many states have been devastated by malaria? Why was it not stopped with medicines? Those who have survived would have survived even without medicines. You boast of doing public welfare. 
But do we have some knowledge of what this world is, how vast it is? By saying living beings, one should not understand the meaning of human beings only, who provides food to all the creatures of different species in this world, who protects them. God says that he laughs three times after seeing man's arrogance. Firstly, when the doctor says when a person is about to die, don't be afraid, I will save him, then God laughs. When the earth is divided into parts due to conflict between brothers, then God laughs. When one king usurps another king's kingdom, God laughs for the third time. You have seen small fish babies in river. In this infinite universe, you are just like a baby fish. Even imagining in the mind, the welfare of the beings is baseless. 8. Empowering Swami Vivekananda Ram Krishna Paramhan's first meeting with Narendra, who was later well known as Swami Vivekananda, took place in 1881, while performing prayers at the house of a devotee. He was especially attracted towards him at first sight and requested him to come to him. When he reached there, Paramhans took him alone and said, I have been waiting so long for you. I know you are an ancient sage. You have taken the body again to save the plight of the living souls. Narendra was shocked to hear these things and started thinking that today, he had to deal with a good madman. He somehow escaped the chase and went back home. After this, when Narendra again went to Paramhans, he convinced him with his special spiritual power that in reality, he was a special soul and he was born to fulfill some great duty of public service. Finally the day came when he became Paramhans Dev's foremost disciple and became capable of fulfilling his purpose.